Hello everyone, and welcome to Learn Stuff with Onan. I am Onan Wintercrow, and today we are outside in the cold, and we are going to be talking a little bit more about crows. Specifically, we are going to be talking about the other types of sounds that crows make other than the standard caw that we have done a video on, and if you haven't seen it, you should check it out now. Uh, links to the video will be in the description. But today, we are going to be going over uh, the other sounds that crows make. The clicks, the little purrs, the little gurgles, and all the other stuff. I've got a, on, my, on my last video, I had a lot of people asking me questions about those. So we are going to clear some of that up today. So crows make a lot of different sounds. Um, science... Scientists have suggested that crows can make up to 30 different types of sounds in specific calls. Now, you as an individual, that is a lot to try to maintain and keep up with. And as far as the other sounds go, complications arise. And we're going to get into some of those complications here in just a couple of minutes. But to, to understand the the sounds that I'm talking about, I'm talking about like the sound that you'll sometimes hear, the whenever they're sitting up in a tree or like they're kind of hitting their beak down on something. You'll also hear like clicks and coos and stuff together. One of the sounds that uh, I've seen is they'll make a click and then they'll kind of coo and they'll arch their back. So they're like, So what exactly does that mean? Also, um, a lot of you people in the video, you've mentioned like a ratchet sound. Uh, and it sounds, it sounds a lot like this. It sounds like a... Hopefully you guys were able to hear that. Um, so yeah, we're going to be going over, we're going to be going over that. But in order to understand these other crow calls, we actually need to look at another animal. And that animal is the cat. That's right. Your house cat can provide a little bit of context clues as to some of these other sounds that a crow makes. And by the cat, what I'm referring to is the cat's purr. Okay? If you have a cat, you know they purr, but let's get down into exactly when all they purr. So a cat will purr when they are anxious uh, in an attempt to try to calm their inner self down it's it kind of like a like a security blanket um cats will also purr when they are injured both really bad injured or just a little bit injured again it's a calming ne mechanism for them uh but cats also use that same purr when they are excited and you'll also notice that like a, an excited cat purr will come with like a little chirp on it. it's not just a is like a you'll hear that sound so it's kind of like a chirp and a purr at the same time um cats also purr when they're just content not neither really you know super happy or super sad or hurting or anything like that they're just they're laying on a couch and the heated blanket is on and they're just content you'll you know your little cat will be like all sprawled out on the couch and you'll hear that just being just being a cat and doing what it does this gives you context clues as to what the crows do as far as making other sounds so why is it important to understand the cat when it comes to this if we're talking about crows well that's because the clicks and the whistles and the little ratchet sounds and all the other sounds that you hear that that crow makes will also make these same sounds under different circumstances um, five of those commonly held circumstances that a crow will make that or like the sound is when they are communicating while searching for something uh, on top of their regular standard calls that are long distance. Calls are always kind of a long distance sound so that other crows in the area can, can understand what's going on. It's kind of like you as a human yelling. Okay, like I'm talking on a video right now, so I'm having to project myself a little bit more than I would 
if we were in like a deeper, you know, conversation uh, with someone who was, you know, closer to us or someone that we knew better. Uh, so communication while searching for like food, um, whenever crows get close, those can indicate subtle different little things. Um, they will also do this when they encounter something that they perceive that might be dangerous, but they're kind of unsure of. Um, and that could be a human, uh, that could be another crow, that could be another bird of some kind. Um, they will use those clicks and whistles and kind of ratchet sounds and, and stuff when they encounter something that they're kind of apprehensive about, but at the same time, they're also willing to get, willing to understand it a little bit more to see if it's something that's dangerous or it's something that's, you know, something that's okay. Um, so you can look at that as kind of like the anxiety purr of a cat, where they're like, I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared, I'm kind of not, I'm gonna kind of suss out the situation and and see what's gonna happen. Uh, so that is another, that is another. Um, area where a crow will use this type of this type of sound. It has also been noted that crows will use these other sounds um, to possibly communicate that they need help or assistance uh, in much the same way your cat purrs when it's injured. So if you see a crow and he looks kind of like he's in distress or he looks like he's kind of you know not not quite comfortable and he's like you know, that might be, you know, an attempt to ask for assistance from like another crow that's closer. Maybe he's trying to get, let that crow know, hey, I need assistance. I don't really want to be loud about this because it might instigate something further with whatever it is in front of me that I'm afraid of, or that's, you know, kind of, that's, 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 you know, could be that I might need help with. Um, so that's something to consider as well. But on the other end of the spectrum, much like your cat chirps and purrs whenever you walk into a room and he gets excited, it is also a way to help the group bond. So these various clicks, whistles, purrs, coos, also create like a bonding situation within the group itself. Uh, it's kind of, you know, like I said, I'm projecting myself on a video, but... You know, if we're having coffee together and we're kind of talking, hey man, what's going on? How you doing? Yeah, man, that's man, that's cool. I lower my voice a little bit when I'm with somebody that you know I know, and we're kind of hanging out. You know, if we're in a coffee shop, something like that. It's a where they're still communicating, but it's a different type of communication. See, we use words as humans. Crows don't have words per se. Uh, they can learn them, but that's a whole different video. So they use these various different styles of clicks, whistles, purrs, coos, etc., you know, calls to indicate the subtleties that we use as far as like projection and stuff like that goes. Um, which leads to the, you know, to the fifth point. It's used for bonding between mates themselves. You have two crows. They're going to do like little they're gonna do like little coos and little they're gonna do like little sounds to each other to let them you know to let them know hey we're gonna bond it's kind of like with your partner how you call them like baby or sweetie or this or that it's like hey where you want to go babe yeah you look great yeah sure it's kind of that same thing see we change as humans we change volume pitch and wording they change sound so they go from calls to clicks, to whistles, to purrs, to coos, depending on the situation. Now, this gets further complicated scientifically because science has shown that these various clicks, whistles, and patterns are not standardized from one crow group to another crow group. So while a crow in this group might use to indicate, hey, I need help with something that might be dangerous. This group over here, that might be, you know, their bonding, you know, their bonding pattern. So there is no set standard, and that's where the problem for you comes in. There is no set standard as far as how to interpret 
these particular things. Like in my last video with the cause, you can tell the difference between just the where they're trying to communicate with their friends versus like the real erratic, difficult, you know, hard, harsh, just kind of all over the place cause of, you know, hey, there's danger. We need to fuss at this thing. Tell it we're big and bad. Get it out of here. You can tell those, and those are relatively standard as far as proceeding. Now, the amount of calls that's used can have different meanings, and all that's going to kind of change from group to group, situation to situation, or what is going on around that crow. Um, but science has proven that the different clicks and whistles and, you know, little ratchet sounds and all that they use, they can vary for meaning. So if you're following this group and you figured out a meaning, that does not mean that this group over here that you start following is going to use those same patterns, clicks, and whistles in the same context. And that is where things get difficult for you guys. So having said all this, what can you do to further understand these, these types of communications between crows? Well, unfortunately it is not going to be necessarily as easy a task as it is for the cause because because there are so many variables and it can change from group to group and just like the cats purr those same sound bites are used in multiple different situations i gave you five situations there are more so just keep that in mind but those are like five broad uh five broad topics that they would use those those patterns in so the way to interpret these sounds is context observation and intuition to understand these types of communication look at what is going on around the crow so for example let's see we say we see a crow up in a tree and he's doing his click and then he does that little ratchet sound are there any other crows around? Did he do it once you came out there? Did you hear him? Then you went outside and then it stopped. All those could mean different things. In the first context, if there is another crow there, he might be trying to communicate to that crow. That crow might be a part of the group. That crow might even be its mate, depending on, you know, their interactions with each other, and that's where your observation comes in. Um, if he did it just when you came outside, like, you know, you didn't hear, you heard regular calls or whatever, and then you went outside, and then you heard that, well, that very well might be a greeting to you. Uh, if it's a crow that, you know, you've gotten close to, and he recognizes you, and he knows what's up, um, it very well could be a greeting. If it was the third situation where you heard the sound and it got your attention and then you came outside and then there was no more sound but the crow was still there and he's just hanging out it very well could have been you know a way to get your attention but not necessarily alert the rest of the group that he wanted to you know have a have an interaction with you um just like a cat's purr context is everything when it comes to this and that's that's simply something that i cannot I can't elaborate too much on over a video because there is so many different circumstances um, that can go around that as to why they do what they do. So it would be, you know, and even science backs me up on this, it is impossible to be able to determine why they make these certain sounds in certain situations to give one concise meaning over the entire group. It just, with these other sounds, it just doesn't work that way. So look at the context of the situation what's going on in the situation observe what's going on around that crow is there a fox on the ground you know do you hear something kind of rustling over in the bushes that sounds a little bit bigger you know might be something that he is alarmed at you know did he do it when you came outside did he stop doing it when you came outside are there other crows around him are the crows fussing at each other all these things will help kind of guide you into what your group of crows use those particular um, vocalizations for. That and intuition. Uh, I know, I know, intuition, you know, some people are like, I don't have no intuition. Well, 
you know, that's okay. You can use context and observation to help you out, but intuition. And, you know, I know it's going to kind of sound new agey or whatever, but what do you feel in the situation as well? Do you feel that it was a greeting? Does what the crow is what the crow doing match what you would feel as like, you know, a greeting? Like you see a friend, hey, what's going on? You can tell, hey, that's a friendly greeting, but that's from another human. But context clues tell you everything. If you see a guy and you're walking up and he's like, hey, what's up, man? You can tell that greeting. But if you're also walking up to a guy and he's like, and he's just, context will tell you a lot. And your intuition at that point as a human is like, oh, this is a friendly guy. Do I know him? You know, he's waving at me. That On the other side, your human intuition tells you, oh, this guy's either mad about something, mad at me about something, or we've had a dealing that I don't remember that, but he remembers me, right? Your intuition will clue you into these types of things. And you have to be able to use that intuition when determining what these other sounds from the crow and stuff mean. So as far as questions about what, you know, what oh, I went outside and the crow, you know, made two clicking sounds and did this, what does it mean? Well, I don't know. You tell me, what did it mean? What was going on around the crow? What did you observe? And what did your intuition tell you about that? Did, did you interpret it as a greeting? Did you interpret it as a warning? Did you know did you go outside and he started kind of clicking and tapping and then you walked a little bit and he immediately flew away? Well, context, observation, and intuition will tell you, well, maybe he wants to get close to me, but he's still a little apprehensive. So he's, you know, knocking and, you know, you know, giving, you know, little vocalizations to kind of kind of suss out the situation, see what I do. You know, that very well, you know, could lead you to the right instance for that group of crows to know what that vocalization means. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, hit the like button for me. Uh, if you have any questions, statements, accolades, leave them in the comments. I love to talk to people. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and also, uh, be sure to check into the description of this video. I will have other crow videos uh, in the description of this video. I am Onan Winter Crow. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next lesson.